The Bungie 30th Anniversary Pack is releasing in just three days. Y'all ready to blow your life savings on some Destiny 2 expansions? Well, you might want to hold your horses for a second. Because for free, we get the six player activity that I imagine has some rewards tied to it. But the website didn't say whether it does or not, so who knows. But purchasing this pack will give access to two bozo looking armor sets. The hopefully glorious return of Galahorn. Please God. Don't screw it up. But from Bungie's interview with Polygon, it sounds like they have a clear vision of where they want Galahorn to be, and I agree with them. They say they don't want it to be the best weapon in the game, but something that can be used anywhere effectively while still being easy to use. They compare it to Master Yi from League of Legends, but since I still have my will to live, I don't play League, so I didn't understand that reference. In Destiny 2 nerd terms, they said it won't be complex like Anarchy. Like how to use it properly, you would need to know how many Anarchy bolts to stick to a boss. That's not going to be like that. I I think this is probably the best direction to take Galahorn into Destiny 2 with. That's clear from being the thing I'm worried about in this pack. But also at the same time, there's a little bit of a concern that in the interview, Bungie states that players introducing their friends will be like, after New Light, we're gonna run this dungeon and get you Galahorn. It sounds like that implies the dungeon is free since New Lights are typically free to play players, but it says they're charging for the pack. So I guess we'll probably never get a free experience like Whisper Outbreak ever again. I mean, if Bungie thinks that they will get some kind of profit out of it, like with Hawkman or Deadman's Tale, it's probably going to be monetized, which I really can't blame them for, but at the same time, those missions were a great way to get people to purchase the game. Since they were really high quality and given out for free, they kind of wanted to experience the rest of the game. Did y'all just see that in the background footage? What's the point of even arguing about this stuff when the game doesn't even work properly? But uh, anyways, we come to the dungeon in the loot cave called the Grasp of Avarice, which gives the thorn-themed armor set and a sword from the game Myth that absolutely no one has heard of, and these two bozo weapons, wherever they came from, I have no idea. And most importantly, the 1000 yard stare in the Aes Luna. That is what's going to make or break this pack for me. Any avid Destiny 1 fan should be creaming their pants that Aes Luna and the OG 1K are making their well deserved return. But, big big but, the most detrimental thing to this pack is where the Aes Luna and the 1000 yard stare are slotted. If I see the Aes Luna facing this way and not this way, I'm baby raging on reddit, I'm gonna have a fit. We already have the second coming of Christ in the energy slot, so it's just gonna be a complete and utter waste to have it be there even if it is better, since it will only be better by a minor amount since palindrome is already a peak hand cannon. The kinetic slot though has a grand opportunity to crown a new king. Fatebringer is pretty good but it can feel a little lackluster at times, so I do hope the Iceland will become the top pick. But there is a little Twitter trend to worry about going on right now, and take it with a grain of salt because we all know how high IQ Twitter users are, but there is a conspiracy that Ice Luna will be a 180. If it's a 180, I'm gone. See y'all in Witch Queen, I'm out of here. But there is also another issue that might prevent Ice Luna from being the top future pick. It's perk selection. If it doesn't have rangefinder or explosive payload, I don't see any reality where anyone with a brain is going to be using that gun other than a quick minute of nostalgia or if it's good in PvE. 1000 yard stare though is a bit of a different story. I want it to face this way, but I'm not going to be too upset if it's facing this way. The kinetic slot makes me kind of angry. The two big boy snipers are the Eye of Soul and the Shepherd's Watch, which are both irritating to get. So a nice kinetic sniper that's easy to obtain would be fantastic. At the same time though, the energy slot would be a good fit since in a perfect world where Bungie actually plays their game, they would make Ice Luna a kinetic weapon, so being able to use them at both at the same time would be mwah, chef's kiss. And some of you might have already been thinking this looking at the picture of the 1000 yard stair chilling up there, but oh my lordy, if it actually does come out with the old eagle eye scope, that stupid, bulky, a million zoom scope, well I'm gone. See y'all in Witch Queen, I'm outta here.